The Velvet Rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only, Billy Lee. Hi. Can I say that you're hungover? Is that bad to say? <laughs> no, you can You can tell everyone that I'm hungover. I don't want to out you right away. <laughs> I appreciate you being here. We're live. I love, I mean, when you suggested live, I was like, yes, so much better. Yeah. I think if you're going to have a conversation. It's nice to do it in person if you can. And see someone face to face. Mm -hmm. So before we get into everything, we'll get into like all the current stuff you're doing now. I know you've got some comedy. You have a mm -hmm. book we're going to talk about. Maybe go down a reality TV road for a minute. Yes. I don't, I'm sorry. But like, let's just start at the beginning. I always like to get to know someone like when they're first here. So how did you end up in LA from Indiana? Like what, did you come here to like act and like get into comedy? Was that your goal? Um, well, I went to school for journalism, radio, TV, and film, and I started out, like, internships as a reporter, and you have to start in a small market if you want to be a reporter. Um, and at the time, I identified as I was in a male body, so, um, and I was very femme. I dressed in very femme. Uh, I didn't even know, like, really the word trans or transgender at the time, and Every time I would get done with my internship, I did three of them. They're like, you're too feminine for, like, to be on TV in a small town. Um, so, yeah, after the rejection, I was like, I think I need to move to a bigger city where I feel, like, just more accepted. And that's really kind of what brought me here. When, because you said, you know, like, at that point you were in a male body. Like, when did you kind of figure everything out? Um, I didn't know anything about being trans until I came to L.A. and I was at a bar in West Hollywood and this like drunk um, guy who said he was a psychic <laughs> was like, I mean, I was sharing my story, so I don't know how like legit psychic he was, but he was like, sweetie, you're trans. And I was like, what? And then a light bulb just went off and then I like started doing research and um you know, like when you f it's when you like fall in love with somebody and you can't stop thinking about it, and you daydream and you're up all night just like thinking and like that's how I felt with um, transitioning. I was like everything made sense, so I just went through this beautiful period of uh, figuring everything out, feeling validated, um, and then making the decision to start hormones and and really go through the transition. Of course, it's, like, it's such a Hollywood, like a West Hollywood story. Of course, it was like a psychic in a bar in West Hollywood. <laughs> I'm just like, and I'm just, that doesn't even phase me. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay. it's a good story. It was, but I feel like I needed to also come here and just like have the freedom and separation from my family and my upbringing. Because, um, you know, in the Midwest, and especially that time, people want to, it's very binary. They want to stick you in a box and... um I had I was just pouring with feminine energy, and people around me were very uncomfortable with that. And then when I moved to L.A., it was accepted. Were you? I mean, listen. I mean, I grew up outside in New York, but still, it was the suburbs, and mm -hmm. you know, it was a different time. And yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, my childhood wasn't really something that I would wish on anyone. You yeah. know, like I was bullied in high school, and I mean, as I say, with a smile on my face, because here we are. But mm -hmm. like, were you? Did you have like that type of childhood too? Yes, it was bad. Um, yeah, I missed a lot of grade school. My parents did the best they could, but you know, they were teenagers having, they were babies having babies. And, um, yeah, I just, I missed a lot of school. And, uh, and it was all just because I was bullied so bad and I was scared to go. Um, all, like, I remember in middle school, all of the bathroom uh, graffiti was all about me sucking dick. And I didn't even know how to suck dick then. But, yeah, the rumors, everyone knew who I was. I, my friends would call me, like, small town famous. <laughs> yeah, it's always good when you go to the bathroom and you see yourself. I listen, I, I I get it when your name is like written on the stalls, right? Yeah. That's always fun. Yeah, I think I had a moment though where I was like, because I tell people this too, when people say like, what do you tell anyone who's been bullied or being bullied? And it's really just uh, loving yourself through that experience. And I just remembered one day I was like, these people are taking the time out of their day to like, think about me and write on the wall about me. And um, 
yeah, I just, I try to change my perception from being a victim. And then I really just try to love myself as much as I could, even journaling and writing like positive things about myself helped. When you were here and then like you decided to transition or like start that, you know, like was your family, you know, you said that like, were they understanding? Like, did you mm -hmm. have a support system in terms of them or like in terms of friends? Yeah. I mean, they didn't really know when I first decided to start hormones and stuff. And then um, when I was transitioning, I got to a point where people couldn't put me in a box, you know, like they were very confused by my look. And I had tons of serving experience, manager experience at a restaurant. I started when I was 14. But you know, in Los Angeles back in the day, you had to hand in like a headshot with your resume to be a server. So I would send in an old headshot and I had a crazy amount of experience and people would call me for an interview left and right. But as soon as they saw me, they never gave me the job. Um, so I just ended up slipping into a really bad place and I was doing street like sex work. Um, to make ends meet. And I remember being like, oh my God, I made a mistake. Like, I'm not being accepted by society. I can't get a job. I'm hormonal as fuck. I'm literally going through puberty, like all over again, I felt like. And um, my dad called me out of the blue because both of my parents didn't know I transitioned yet. And he said, I just want you to know if you ever want me to walk you down the aisle, you as a woman in a dress, I would be happy to. And it was like the call I needed. It was like the, because I was suicidal at that time. And yeah, I just kind of affirmed that I was doing the right thing. That must have been a shock, like to get that call, I got out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And my dad was not comfortable with me being feminine back in the day. He struggled with it the most. What was like, did you ever think of like when you were doing like street sex work or like just calling it in and like, let's leave LA. I mean, that would be a. I never, there was no going back to me. Like for me, I've been here 18 years now. Um, and I, when I first moved here, I ended up being homeless, living out of my car with my cat and dog. <laughs> I'll never forget. I had a litter box on the floorboard, like on the floor. And I had my cats and dog like tied up in my car the windows were open, but like I had a job when I first moved here. I got a job the day that I got here, but I didn't have, something happened. My friend fell through and I didn't have a place. And um, so I just lived out of my car until I got enough money um, for my jobs. And then my mom sent me a thousand dollars and I got a little hole in the wall studio in um, Hollywood. And you had, like, you were, su like, you had that dark of thoughts that you were suicidal? Uh, yeah. I've, I mean, I think, um, there's, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think for an escape, especially when I was younger, 